Okay, hi everyone and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. I am Gabriella Handel, I'm a draftsman and also the host of the show, A Conversation About Art, where I'm doing long-term research on the meaning of art and beauty. If you'd like to support my channel, liking, leaving a comment, and sharing this video is incredibly helpful and so is subscribing. Other support links are in the caption, show notes, or description, whatever you call it. Today we have episode 95 and my guest is artist Tree. Tree, welcome. Very, uh, thank you very much for being here. Please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Hello everyone and hello Gabrielle. Uh, thank you for having me right here. Uh, I'm so excited to uh, to meet you today to talk about art. Uh, currently, I'm uh, I'm an artist and an illustrator, and I'm mostly working on ink, pen and ink drawing. And um, my works, you know, um, I usually do kind of workshops and courses and manuals for people to learn how to draw. And then I also, um, uh, you know, have some kind of freelance jobs like an. Uh, as a book illustration mm -hmm. or you know like design and everything else yeah and that's my that's what I'm doing now yeah okay um yes so I guess um what I just um I don't remember exactly how I came about your profile but it was somehow on Instagram and you were doing these kind of linear portraits um yeah with I don't even know what that tool is called in English uh, but anyway it's um, I mean are those is that also part of the illustrations that you make are those illustrations yeah uh, I mostly work on a uh, pen and ink and and the technique you uh, you saw on my Instagram is kind of um, the cross contour that uh, that's kind of you know I was inspired by a very traditional technique in printmaking like you know like people using uh, metal tools to engrave the metal mm -hmm. and then they put ink and then like you know print making technique and then I was inspired by that you know visual technique and then I applied to my drawing okay uh, <laughs> that's really cool so you decided so 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 yeah I, um, I don't know the method that method of printmaking but I, I mean I know the appearance of it because it's like that's I mean it looks like the dollars you know like what they print money yeah. with um, and it's you know the image is built up by these but by these lines that have varying varying thickness along yeah. each line in order to be able to kind of like communicate the depth and uh, you know pe peaks and valleys on the surface um, yeah. Okay, so, all right, so I would like it if you told me a little bit more about illustration and what illustration is to begin with and why are those drawings that you're making illustration and not fine art? Um, I think that it's very hard to uh... To have a, a, a clearly defined, you know, uh, is to, to, to clearly define the, the the difference between fine art and illustration, mm -hmm. because because uh, you know now in contemporary world, I I think that everything can be fine art, uh, but uh, I think that uh, my illustrations, uh, some of some of them can be a fine art piece, like you know some 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 of my. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know some of my artwork like uh, in surrealistic style and something like that I consider it as an artwork but uh, some uh, some illustrations to show people how to uh, how to draw like you know like tutorials or some 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 illustrations for book uh, you know like I'm, I'm I'm working with some publishers and they uh, they asked me to do some drawing to um, to express the scene, you know, to visualize the scene in a book, and mm -hmm. then I consider that uh, an illustration because it's, you know, it's for a purpose. And then uh, for 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 my 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 artwork, you know, that there's no purpose for that. Just you know, just go, uh, I I just want to go wild with the creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so all right. So I'm gonna try to paraphrase. So then so then so then in your opinion an illustration has the purpose of working as kind of a depiction of a specific 
book passage or like a book cover or yeah. like a specific idea whereas a yeah. uh, fine art like a work of art isn't tied to a sp necessarily tied to a specific sort of interpretation is that is that what you is that what you think yeah does that make yeah, sense okay yeah. um okay all right it's cold and my nose is a little runny so i have to okay um Okay, and would you remind me again, please, what are the other things that you're currently doing, please? Besides uh, illustration. Um, uh, do, do you mean my work, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, doing, um, I'm doing freelance jobs as, you know, illustration, and then uh, I, 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 I teach people how to, uh, to draw uh, by, uh, by running workshops, online workshops and courses and manuals, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, I, uh, I take my time to, uh, to create artwork, like, you know, like fine art, as I shared with you earlier. Right. Yeah. And okay. those are some work, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I had a, I had a look at your website, and, and uh, it really seems that you're very adept at <laughs> these things, because uh, not just the fine art, but also the illustration, um, and, uh, and also, there's also calligraphy, no? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh years ago yeah so you stopped uh, I, you stopped uh, doing calligraphy yes i think so uh okay. i start i started uh doing calligraphy in um you know like almost 10 years ago and then i have five or seven years to work on that you know calligraphy and lettering uh but then i think that my creativity is tied to uh to letters and writing so i i i i didn't want to 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 keep you know to 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 be limit myself so okay. i want to be more creative yeah okay um okay and do you have a preference so when you do when you do painting you said you do oil painting right yeah i do okay and um do you have a preference between oil painting and working with pen and ink or or well okay uh all right just give me a minute um no, okay what what things do you like about oil paint and what things do you like about pen and ink and well uh, yeah okay yes answer that for now yeah uh be, you know because i like to work on uh, any kind of media like you know uh -huh. i want to explore yeah I, I want to explore and uh with oil painting i think that uh i i have very good feeling and emotion when i when to the painting, you know, like very relaxing and forget about everything else. And mm -hmm. I also really love, um, you know, colors, like uh, like you know, color schemes and everything else. And then uh, uh, the oil painting shows a very traditional mood and feeling. So yeah, I, 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 I you know, I feel so 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 relaxing to do oil paintings. Uh, but uh, with illustration, I think that. Um, Illustration is, um, you know, pen and ink drawing is more like depicting the lighting and the, the shading more than colors. Mm -hmm. So I can put more, so I can express more emotional, like, you know, feeling by playing with lighting. And, uh, you know, like the chiaroscuro, the contrast between the lights and, and everything else. So it looks more cinematic. I, I don't know. Yeah, because I love the feeling of, of monochromatic. Uh, yeah, yeah, scenes yeah. in movies yeah so um okay. i think that's the difference yeah okay that's really interesting um that's really very interesting and it makes me think of black and white photography actually um yeah. because um i it's i have a hypothesis that almost anything looks good in black and white photography yeah. that it's that it's like almost easy to do black and white photography because it's very easy to make anything look good and, and and that makes a lot of sense with what you were saying because like that contrast you know the contrasts that can be found in the um, relationships between the lights and the darks and the midtones also yeah. you know can yeah. be can be just very pleasing to the eye and kind of very like calls out to the eye whereas when you're using you know like you were saying with oil paint you're using you have access to like all of these colors and i mean there is some of that as well because i mean you know, there's something about the manipulation of like the chromatic quality yeah. of colors. Like if it's really, really colorful and it's kind of, it kind of looks like candy 
versus where it's really yeah. muted and it's kind of like uh, you know like Rembrandt where it's yeah. maybe actually closer to what we're talking about with the black and white, you know, uh, where it's cinematic and it's very light focused and kind of like that intensity. Um, but um, I don't know. I just I like what you said a lot about the illustration part in particular and 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 kind of relying on that those lights and darks only and not uh, not bringing in color and kind of only using yeah. the limitation of the light and dark to be able to convey information yeah. in in your drawing. And I like it in particular because I draw. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, and, I know, yeah. And, uh, and I, 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 I saw your beautiful drawings on Instagram. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. And, and it's like, I, I, I have such a strong bias for pencil. You know, a graphite or charcoal, I like both, though I tend to use graphite more just because I'm very familiar with it. Um, but I greatly enjoy being able to kind of have that sort of control over the appearance of the image with that uh, stuff. So... That made me feel really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With what you were saying there. Okay. Okay. So then, conversely, what would you say are the downsides or defects of oil painting? And then, what do you think are downsides or defects of working with pen and ink? Uh, I think that is um, or for. for for oil painting, you know, uh, it's very hard to 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 say what is the down, you know, the downside of uh, oil painting because I really really love oil painting, but uh, because uh, for you know for doing any oil artwork, you need to uh, invest a lot of time, mm. like you know for for the composition sketching and for preparing the canvas and preparing everything else. And sometimes some uh, some medium, some oil painting medium and materials may harm your health. Mm. So um, yeah, so I think that's the downside of uh, right, oil painting. But but yeah, but everything else is really good. You know, the feeling is so good. Uh, and with pen and ink drawing, so the only downside I think that is uh, no, it's not the only one. The first one is. Um, we uh, it's very hard for us to work on large size drawing. Mm. Like you know, like if you want to make a really large work, uh, you need to use kind of brush or you know some some materials that you can make it quicker. Yeah. And and the second one is um, uh, we it's very hard for us to use color and to capture the beautiful, you know, like color harmonize in your work. Yeah. So uh, sometimes you know because I really love color, so sometimes I really want to do something colorful, mm -hmm. but with pen and ink, I I I I I I can't. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's yeah. two downsides of pen ink. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's those are those are good points. Okay. Yes, I think yeah, I think you're quite right about particularly about the large scale uh, aspect of uh, drawing. Because I think the only way I can think of, I mean, because because I mean, I think, I mean, what I understand from what you're saying is that. It's difficult and it's a downside because, I mean, in a way, the bigger a piece of paper is, the weaker it is, like the more vulnerable it is, yeah. you know, because if you poke it or, you know, can tear the edge, like this type of stuff. Um, yeah. And paper, unfortunately, in a, you know, needs to be against something like a piece of wood or like a wall or something, or like if you're drawing it, you're going to poke through with the pencil. Or the brush or yeah. whatever you're gonna damage the paper yeah so like i agree that that's definitely a downside and you know i've been thinking for a while now about how drawing isn't considered to the same level as oil painting in the sense that it seems to be uh, oil painting seems to be favored greatly in term of like for example like for collecting because yeah. when you buy a painting it's gonna last a really long time Whereas, yeah. you know, we have, we have drawings from, uh, uh, you know, from the Renaissance and re very old drawings and everything. We have them, but they are very, very delicate. Yeah. You know, you can't, you, you know, you have to be very careful with them, you know, kind of basically for, for what I was saying just now. And I mean, I, I think in part is because of that vulnerability of, of paper and I mean of the drawing as well, because you can't, you can't just touch a drawing, yeah. you know, um, because also we 
only started fi- being able to fix drawings in the Renaissance. With uh, Albrecht Durer, he started kind of experimenting, I guess, in a way with this fixing of drawings where he would, uh, they would dip the drawing in, in rabbit skin glue. And that was kind of like the beginning of being able to fix a drawing. And so, I mean, now we have much better methods of fixing drawings. But, yeah, unless you mount the drawing to something, yeah. it's like you can't really make very big drawings. And that's definitely, that's definitely a flaw in the, in the medium. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So um, what, what would you say is your subject matter? Like what kind of stuff do you like to paint or draw or... Or, like, do the subjects of your drawings and paintings, is it the same subject matter, you know? Like, what kind of stuff do you like to talk about when you're painting versus when you're drawing? Um, for, for subject matters, um, uh, it, you know, like, it depends on the, the idea I have in my mind. Mm. Because I mostly work in, um, you know, because I really like kind of surrealism art. And okay. then, uh, I, uh, I always try to express the uh, the inner feeling and the psychological states, and then so uh, any kind of subject matters that can fit my concept, I, I can use it. Mm. And and but um, the most you know my most favorite subject matter is uh, figurative drawing, mm. like mm-hmm. you know like uh, you know like uh, portrait and you know figures because with figures it's it's very easy to me to express exactly my concept and idea. But uh, but in addition, uh, there are other subjects like animals and everything else that, you know, can support the main concept of my work. Okay, so do you depict the figure in both your paintings and drawings? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, I, I saw those portraits um on but well but both on your instagram and on your website i think because um some of them are like the cover for you have like an eye i don't remember which one i don't remember where i saw it but it was the drawings that you were making with these lines with this line method of yours and i particularly liked like a three-quarter eye that you drew it was like to teach or something um but I mean, this is tangential, but I'm just saying that I liked it a lot because it's so it's like a three quarter aisle. It's just the eye. And I quite enjoyed how you portrayed the kind of like the thickness of the lids of the eyelids with the lines, because I don't know, I just feel like that information is so often missing and forgotten when we depict the figure that that we are made of flesh and fat and muscle yeah. and and then that you know in the drawing even though it's a very small drawing it's like that flesh is different from the surface of the eyeball you know because the eyeball yeah. is very smooth compared and it's like it just uh, i don't know it has like a lot of solidity and it feels very act like the the texture of the skin versus the surface of the eyeball they feel very accurate you know and i yeah. just greatly enjoyed that and so um, I was, I sort of think that is almost hyper-realistic in a way, because, you know, hyper, um, hyper is, like, above, so, like, more real than real, sort of. Yeah. But it's, like, yeah. but it's, like, better than the hyper-realistic, I mean, I don't like hyper-realism, I'm just saying that in, in yeah. the, the, the way the drawing felt, it's, like, in a way, that is kind of real hyper-realism or something. Or good yeah. hyper-realism, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But um, wh- I would like it if you talked to me a little bit about surrealism. Um, I mean, I'm sure lots of people know, but, you know, Dali and the surrealists and, you know, dreams and this type of stuff. But so I guess sur is under, you know, versus hyper above. Sir is like... Yeah kind of uh, beneath reality or something or like dream reality you know something I mean why don't you tell me a little bit about that and why does it call your attention uh surrealism all right so surrealism is, is is just something not real and dreamy yeah because um 
I um I've been inspired by my own dreams, you know, because mm. I I I have a lot of dreams every day and okay. every time and, and it's kind of and when I research more, uh I know that surrealism is kind of doing art or you know in any kind of surrealism art like you know drawing painting or poetry or literature and everything else mm -hmm. uh the artists and um and the writers they are mostly working on you know like inspired by the in the unconscious mind mm. like you know like um do you know like kind of free writing like automatism like you yeah. know, just write whatever you want and and it shows your unconscious mind and i really like that concept because you know uh with conscious with unconscious mind we can we tell the truth you mm -hmm. know like you know mm -hmm. we we don't need to think about anything we just talk and to draw and to do anything that we are thinking you know it, immediately mm -hmm. we don't have to think about that so uh so it shows our you know like real personality yes in, yes in, in in any artwork so that's why i really want to um to to um to express my work by using surrealism art yeah okay okay um and you know i like the relationship or maybe the contrast between that and the very deliberate and conscious treatment of the work yeah. because for example like the line method that you're using for the for the illustrations that you've been doing um i mean th you know that's planned out and thought through and so that's in contrast with letting with letting your subconscious kind of ex express itself in a way so then so then when you have like these two opposing or these kind of like opposite things and kind of you kind of let them come together and then the result is the drawing and then that's really yeah. cool <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um i think because you know um for uh for doing kind of um you know to express to express the uh, the unconscious mind i do lots of sketchings like you know like just using pencils and do lots of sketching and then I can combine together or I can pick one that I really like and then I start to work on the whole process to right. finalize soon ink drawing so uh so for pen and ink drawing it's more like um, media and technique mm. than the idea so the idea I just you know sometimes I don't have to do sketching I just what I just write something you know mm -hmm. like go outside and then i just write something I, I i feel and then i come back home based on that i can develop a phone drawing yeah okay 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 well <laughs> that's really cool i like that a lot uh okay uh, i must ask i must ask you other things mr tree what is art in your opinion um it's it's a very it's a very hard question you know like you know it's hard to answer uh because everyone has different opinion uh and um uh to me in my opinion i think that art needs to um uh need to express you know need to um to gain the emotion from the audience like mm -hmm. when you uh, listen to a, a song you like you may cry for a, a, a novel or you look at uh, a painting and you feel so familiar with some place that you have never been before for example like that you know any kind of emotions is is really important mm -hmm. and uh, in art and the second thing i think of is that uh, art needs to um to tell a story or to convey a message like you know like uh that message doesn't have to be very clear like you know like uh, it's kind of an. Uh, it can be a, an unconscious mind of the artist, or or the personal story of the artist, or something you know anything. But it needs to contain something that people need to get into, like you know a world of the artist. People can get into and they can and hear a story and they can understand it. And the first thing I think that's the last thing in art is that to um, to. Um, you know to reflect that that period of time like when you look at some paintings and art in uh, in history 
you can see that oh, people in 15th or 16th century they uh, they relied on um, on religions, for for example, mm. or, or or you can understand life in uh, 19th century through painting and drawings. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so the artwork needs to reflect the current time when we live in. So in the future, uh, you know, like 100 or 200 years later, uh, when our next generations, they look at our drawing and they know that, oh, at that time we have laptops, we have mm -hmm. phone, we have something like that. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, like reflects our life. Yes, so I think that is the first reason for doing art. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, but, uh, okay, so, so those, so, so these three are reasons to make art. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay. But then, so, but, but then you don't necessarily think that the work reflecting the period of time is necessary for something to be a work, to be art. Is that right? Um, yeah, it's not necessary, but, uh, but you know, like, uh, for example, I don't have the purpose to express my, uh, to, to express the period of time. Mm. Uh, in my art, mm. but uh, it just shows, you know, like when people look at that, people understand that uh, that period of time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that it's not necessary, but it's just automatically shows in the artwork. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I think especially with painting, well, maybe with, maybe with drawing too through the paper, but I was. I recently learned that painting, when it started in the Renaissance, uh, oil painting specifically, it was very different compared to what it is now because uh, apparently back then they only had like 20 colors or something, yeah. uh, for example. And now it's like, what brand of colors do you want? Or yeah. what type of red do you want? You know, so it's like, yeah. So it's like, in a way, in a way, the period of the period of time doesn't necessarily have to be reflected in the subject matter because the materials themselves are kind of physical evidence of the times themselves. Like with yeah. painting, for example, I'm sure that with the varnishing method or like the type of colors that you're using or like the type of uh, linen or fabric that you're using, you know, a person from the future will easily be able to differentiate that from a painting yeah. from the Renaissance, for example. Um, yeah. So that's cool. And, and I mean, the reason for which I'm focusing on that is because uh, I don't like, I don't, I mean, it's just my personal taste. I don't care for when paintings depict cell phones or computers and this type of stuff. Although at the same time, you know, and at the same time, I, I do agree with you that that information is going, is just by default going to get into all the paintings of the time because, you know, it's kind of by default going to talk about the technology of the time because, you know, at some point we didn't have guns and at some point we didn't have, uh, we stopped using horses for example, yeah. and like that information is in paintings or photographs, you know, when photography, yeah. you know, then we had photographs, you know, so then, so then like all that information kind of gets seeped into the artistic depictions of the time anyway. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, okay. Okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so. Okay, so, um. All right, let me think for a second. Uh, because I, I also liked the other two characteristics of art that um, you said, the one about gaining, kind of like provoking an emotion on the viewer and telling a story or de like delivering a message. And I want to ask you about both of those things. Um, yep. So... So, for the emotion part, um, do you think that, I mean, in your opinion, do you think that the emotion, 
do you think that the emotion summoned by the work of art in the viewer, does it have to be positive? Does it matter if it's positive or negative? Um, you know, what do you think about that? Do you, do you think it's better if it's a positive emotion? Um, what, what do you, what do you think about that? What would you say about that? Uh, I think that, uh, positive or negative are both okay because, um, the most importantly, you know, the most important, um, uh, things in an artwork is to show the, um, the empathy between the artist and mm. the viewers. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, it can be negative, it can be positive, it can make some, uh, it can make the, uh, the, the viewers feel so sad or feel so happy. It's okay. Everything else. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm taking a note. Actually, when you said, uh, when you started saying empathy between the artists, I thought you were going to say empathy between the artist and the subject matter because yeah. Because that, be, because then, because I mean, I, uh, I personally prefer work that is like skewed positive, you know? So, but I mean, I like lots of works. For example, I mean, uh, I, I like Kath Kollowitz a lot and her drawings yeah. and her etchings are very, are sad, you yeah. know? Uh, she, she painted dead people, starving people. Um, but I think because of, you know, her being moved by the subject matter and then her wanting to talk about how she felt about the subject matter that she had made her very sad and, uh, you know, I, I wish I could change this somehow. I, I can only draw, you know, um, I think there might be something important there. Um about the em um all right what am i just give me a second <laughs> the empathy okay. between huh <laughs> yeah it's okay it's okay <laughs> yeah yeah i just uh trying to gather my words here trying to see what i'm trying to say yeah because Um, she has this one, I always talk, not, not always, I have mentioned this drawing of hers, and it's a mother with a dead child. Um, and it's, you know, it's a mixture of the subject that she's depicting versus her skill at depicting it. Um, Because it's the skill, because she knows how to draw, or, you know, she knew how to draw very well. It's the skill that's the real communicator of all of that information yeah. that she's trying to talk about. Because it's her skill at being able to depict the body, at being able to depict the gesture. Um, so, I mean, in the drawing, I mean, you might have seen it already, but I'm going to describe it anyway, okay? It's a drawing where uh, uh, the mother is like sitting on the floor in kind of like a half uh, and kind of like a half Indian pose, and she's holding uh, her chi her dead child in her arms. So then you have a living person and a dead person depicted in the in the image, and you know you don't depict those things the same way because a dead body does not look the same as a living body. So the artist has to know how to show that information, right? Yeah. Um, but then the mother's kind of like her body language also you know that she's desperate because her child is dead and she's sad because her child is dead and so it's because of her skill that she's able to provide that information in that image and i think i think the i think her skill is the messenger and you know i just i just get the message when i look at the work yeah. and yeah but the messenger is very important so then so then yeah. i mean what i'm trying to say is that i think i agree with you about how the emotion itself doesn't necessarily matter 
I mean, that's kind of what I understood. As long as there is emotion being communicated and found yeah. in the viewer. But, but I also think, I guess I want to add actually that, that in that case, it's still important for the artist to be able to communicate clearly the information yeah. of, yeah, I mean, that was a long rant, but what do you think about that? <laughs> um, our, uh, do you mean, uh, like, you know, um, okay. So let, let's say that we, um, we want to communicate with, um, the viewers. So we need to have something in between mm. to communicate mm -hmm. and um and the technique we have like you know drawing technique sculpting technique or any kind of technique like you know um like a director have the techniques to do a movie for example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh yeah like a technique to convey and to depict the message clearly for reviewers mm -hmm. yeah i think that um i think techniques uh you know technique it's very important for any kind of artwork because um, because we are working on some kind of beauty beautiful visual work like you know like it it needs it usually needs to be beautiful and mm. and and looks good as in as visualized yeah so um so I think technique is really important to capture it but as you see that in contemporary art we have lots of abstract work mm -hmm. and um. And I've heard some people, some people say that um, uh, the artist, the artist doesn't need to have any skill mm -hmm. to do an abstract work. Mm -hmm. And I think that is 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 not right because right. Um, because for doing an abstract work, we um, we we need to study you know academic work yeah. in the early stage, and then we develop our style more, and then we we finally come up with the idea of an abstract work so um so i think that in that time uh the technique is more like you know it's more like uh showing showing the the, the personality and the emotion the emotion more than a clear subject matter mm. like you know in, in in some some work you you don't know what is that you, you just see colors or you just see lines or shape or you know some randoms drawing so it's more like uh the, the real emotions of the artist that they want to convey yeah mm -hmm. in, in drawing yeah mm -hmm. so that's what I think about uh, that so um, I'm not sure if I've <laughs> answered your question clearly but you know that's just what I'm thinking in my mind no 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 I, I think I think yeah. uh, that's definitely I think that's definitely a good addition to to the this whole emotion part that we're talking about because you could easily argue that I mean or I think it has been argued that abstract art is kind of like the true emotion like you were talking about because there's no kind of yeah. subject matter in between but I'm inclined to disagree I mean I, I don't think that's I mean I, I'm aware you know because you said you have heard people saying that I mean I don't I don't think yeah. you said that's your opinion um, I disagree with people who say that it's easier to make abstract art because you can of course make super shitty abstract art it's there's terrible abstract art uh, it takes it also takes skill to make abstract art because and also, I don't know if we have time for this, but um, I have recently be been thinking that abstract art doesn't really exist in the sense yeah. that, you know, humans, you know, we don't, we don't make things out of nowhere. Like all of our thoughts and all of our ideas are based on previous things. It's the, and, and so like the things that our ideas are based on it could be conscious like we know we saw something or unconscious we don't know that we saw something but it yeah. still informs our ideas so yeah. so so it's like any abstract painting that you could show me right now it's like oh i mean that could be a nebula you know the hubble the nasa whatever they took pictures of the universe and it looks just like that basically or it could be like a really close picture of dirt or it could yeah. be just like the sky itself, or it could be like the surface of water, this type of stuff. So, or at the very least, like derived from that sort of imagery, you know, like try, you know, something like that. Uh, so that's kind of why I have been thinking that abstract art doesn't exist, but I do think that it takes skill and knowing and understanding and deliberate decision-making to make a good work of abstract art. Um, yeah. yeah. So, okay, um, all right. So, okay, so the part about a work of art telling a story and conveying a message, do you think that, 
um, do you think that if the viewer doesn't understand what the artist meant when they yeah. make the made the work of art, or if the viewer sees, or if the viewer sees a different message than the one the artist kind of put into the painting? Yeah. Do you think that's very important? Do you think it matters? You know, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very nice question, you know, because I've been thinking about that, you know, because I um sometimes sometimes I want to um to share to share my uh, my my feelings and mm -hmm. my my thinking very very clearly for right. for for the audience, yeah, for for, for the viewers, but sometimes I. I think I don't need to, to to do that, you know. Like I just want to do whatever I I feel, and I just want to express all the um, emotions I have uh, in yeah in in, in 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 my mind. So um yeah, so it could be both. Like you know, sometimes uh, artists can make something you know looks clearly for the viewers to understand, and then they can like you know like investigate and examine the the, the 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 painting oh what is it what is it and what is it for and what does it stand for what is the symbolism what is the iconology and everything else and uh, and but sometimes uh just the feeling is is okay like mm. uh when i when i listen to uh chopin's you know nocturne for example i don't need to understand where he was when he composed that piece mm. or or what he thought about when he composed a piece but i just get my own feeling yeah. by listening to his music so i think that it could be both as mm. yeah i want to mention again yeah in my opinion. okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay you know i think that goes back to the first thing you mentioned about gaining the emotion of the audience because you know chopin got your emotion yeah. it doesn't matter if it was the emotion he intended when he wrote the music or anything he just he he got your attention by arousing that emotion in you, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about whether the import, whether the message of a work of art, really matters necessarily, because. I think it doesn't. Um, yeah. I think what matters for a work of art is for the work of art to be visually really good. Because I think yeah. that, because I think the work being well made is what's going to make it timeless. You know, yeah. because I, I don't have to understand, like, I mean, just like the example that you gave of Chopin, like, I don't have to understand, I don't have to know where he came from. I don't have to know what his first name was. I don't have to know, I don't have to understand music. I don't have, uh, I don't have to know anything but I can still enjoy and appreciate the nocturnes, yeah. you know, and like the same, so, so then in the case of music, it's good audio, it's good oral art, you know? And so like for us, yeah. for the, in the case of, in the case of visual art, uh, you know, like even if you look at a completely obscure artist or, you know, just an artist that you've never heard of from like the Dutch Renaissance or something, it doesn't matter who it is because yeah. their work made it up to the present because it was good. Because somebody yeah. thought it was good and they thought it was worth taking care of it because the work was good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I like that a lot. And and I think, yeah. you know, I think that's very inspiring for artists, you know, like you, me, you know, the visual artist to make really good, visually good work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, Mr. Tree, what is beauty in your opinion? Oh, beauty. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. It's um. You ask. You know. You ask some 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 really nice questions. Uh, okay. that, you know that that's tricky my 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 thinking. Yeah. Yeah. To think about. It. So it's it's again. It's really hard to say what is really, what beauty really is. Yeah. But in um. I don't know, uh, because there are different kinds of beauty. Like you know, I can see, um, I can see something beauty when I spend time with my family, for mm. example. Like you know, like my emotion is really good, and then I think, oh, that thing is really beautiful. Like you know, like just just a very simple, you know, like a very old 
puffy filter or something <laughs> like that. And I think it looks really beautiful. Uh, sometimes something looks really beautiful, you know, in you know, uh, in 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 regular time. But then in some time, I think, oh, it looks too bad. Like you know, I don't really like it. Yeah. So it depends on the emotions again and the mood and the feeling that we have at that time. So um, so it means that. To me, beauty is it is something that makes you feel happy mm. when you look at that, when you listen to that, when you feel that, or something like that. And then uh, it can be anything, like yeah, like when you uh, when you see your your friends, uh, friends that you really love, and then you feel so happy and you think that he or she is beautiful. Yeah, so it is okay. It's absolutely good. Yeah, so it's my Personal opinion. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I, um, yeah, I like that a lot, and I particularly like that you specifically said that it makes you feel happy and positive. Yeah. Um. Because. Um. Because beauty is an ideal, and it's something. It's something, I mean, it's like, it's an ideal and it's a goal in a way, but I mean, it's kind of like, you know, kind of like perfection in a way, in the sense that perfection might be the goal, but what is really important is kind of like to try to reach for it rather than get it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, um, so then when you, when you stop to look at something or when you stop to appreciate something, like if you're having, you know, like your holiday dinner, like you're having a Christmas dinner with your family and you're eating your food and then you suddenly you stop and you look around at your dinner table and you know, like the environment is cozy and warm and the food is delicious and everyone is talking loud and being cheerful and stuff. And kind of like that sensation is kind of like a step towards beauty in a way. Yeah. You know, sort of. I mean, does that make sense? What do you think about that? Um, yeah, as I, um, as I share with you that, you know, um, uh, it's very hard to, 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 to say that something is beautiful or not, but uh, yeah, uh, it can be something beauty. And, um, uh, but you know, in, um, in doing art, in doing art, like, you know, specific, specifically in doing art, mm. that is, we, uh, we need to have kind of a standard for, for visual, for visually beauty, like, you know, like, uh, how beauty is a drawing so that drawing looks uh, for, for example looks really bad so 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 we need to have a standard but um but it depends on the artist like you know like when i um when i look at my work in a few years ago yeah i think that it looks oh my god it looks too bad it like you know it's like an exercise or something like that but uh but at that time i feel that it looks it looks okay yeah mm -hmm. it looks Good at that time so yeah so it's, it's it's very hard to 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 have um a clearly definition of beauty but yeah again i, I think that anything that makes us happy i think that is is is, is something very yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay okay and so <clears throat> how would you say this part about about beauty ties into the emotion part that we were talking about art earlier because you know because of uh, what you mentioned about how it doesn't necessarily matter if it's like as long as the work of art is able to to provoke an emotion in the viewer whether it's good or bad it's like that that is part of, a, of the work of art but then does it does do you think that I mean does that mean that if the emotion provoked in the viewer isn't one of like a positive one of happiness do you think that is 
like a, a negative of that work of art or not is a work of art not good enough or or what do you think about that um because i think not every uh, not every artwork needs to be beautiful mm -hmm. like you know like like for me beauty is is it, it stands for it stands for um you know standing for the the positive feeling mm -hmm. more than negative and for something more negative or looks really dark i think that um it's kind of show more about the um i i i, I can say it, it's it's more like um empathy yeah mm. than beauty yeah so i okay. um I, I just divide it into different you know yeah yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 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 that makes sense okay fair enough okay um all right so mr tree we have reached the 50 minute mark of our conversation here so uh, I'm gonna start to close it out, even though I'm enjoying the conversation. But um, you know, trying to keep it to one hour here. Um, is there anything you want to add? What projects do you have coming up? Where can people find your work? Uh, is there anything you want to plug? You know. Yeah. Um, uh, most of my work I post on my Instagram. It's just chi dot shiba, uh, and then. Um, uh in in the near future i have some uh, some projects coming up like you know like i'm i'm working on some more courses workshops and manuals and uh, uh i'm working on some book illustrations projects for yeah that will be published in uh, in next year or in next few years and then i will also create some artwork uh, with pen and ink drawing but you know, my plan is mostly stick with pen and ink drawing in the future, in the near future. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's what I wanted to share. Okay, good. Because um, those pen and ink drawings of yours are amazing. <laughs> um, where <laughs> Where do you, I mean, do you sell them on your website? Uh, sell artwork? The the pen and ink drawings. Um, For now, no. Yeah, for now, I just draw and keep it for myself. Oh, uh, okay. I do, I do, you know. I do submit some of my works uh, to like uh, to shows, some, you know, to, yeah, to some shows uh, in, 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 in local community and in some magazines or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, but, but, but mostly I keep it for my, <laughs> my, my own for now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know because I don't know. It's, it's time to, to, to sell my work. I, I don't know why you, I, I thought of that. I thought, okay, we may scan the work and we can make some prints for for, yeah, for, yeah. for some people who want to have it on a wall or something like that. But but I don't know. I don't know. I just I, I, I just think that it's not it's not the time to do it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. So I'm gonna start to close it out. Um. Thank you very much, Tree, for joining me. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you for so your... much for having me here. Yeah, you're okay, welcome. It's nice to talk to you. It's nice <laughs> to you. Yes. Yeah, no, thank you. For, uh... Thank you for your patience with all my questions <laughs> and waiting. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really good to, to have yeah someone to talk about art. Yeah. So um. Yeah. I hope to uh to uh, to to meet you again soon in the future. Maybe sure. we can have another conversation. And then I uh I wish you all the best. And then um yeah have a great day with your friends and your family yes thank you very yeah, much right. See okay you again soon okay well um uh, thank you very much uh, everyone for joining us feel free to let uh, tree and i know what you think of this conversation in the comments i encourage you to like this video and share it with all pertinent individuals as it helps the channel and this way more people can listen to these interviews finally i invite you to subscribe to my audiovisual channel because i have more conversations scheduled if you want to support tree myself this podcast or all three the links will be in the show notes. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you everyone. Bye.